without water, we simply can't farm here. We need surface water. We are using, as a state, using a lot of groundwater and it's depleting our groundwater. So sound irrigation practices are an absolute must if we're to continue doing what we're doing. We have 176 acres. It's been in the family since 1917. What's driving the trend of, of growers moving to use recycled water as an irrigation source is need. There's not enough well water. There's not enough fresh water available uh, for their use to irrigate their crops. Obviously water is a precious resource in a state like California. How we manage water is critical to being able to sustain our vineyards. There's lots of different reasons to focus a lot of attention on best practices for water management. We are all aware that California is facing perhaps the worst drought in California history today. We have to learn how to work together and share this incredible resource that we absolutely depend upon. The future of California's agricultural community and sector depends on figuring out how to use water more effectively and efficiently. The good news is that innovative and committed farmers around the state are doing just that. We're learning how to use water in a more effective way that supports both healthy farms and a healthy environment. They're measuring and monitoring water more carefully. They're using smarter irrigation technologies and techniques. They're using pricing to figure out how to allocate and use water more carefully. And they're finding new sources of water, new innovative ways of using highly treated recycled water for growing food and fiber. We can water according to a calendar or we can water according to trees' needs. In order to know what's going on, you have to monitor. Arometers are just ways of measuring soil moisture. We started well over 20 years ago with some very simple arometers, and today they've evolved into such scientific instruments that now we know what's going on 24 hours a day, and it's just absolutely imperative that you know where your water is and if you're actually using it or, or flushing it through the system. We have weather stations which give us temperature, humidity, and wind speed and rainfall. And we use those just to keep track of what is going on here. We've actually reduced water consumption in this field by probably 20%. Our yields have actually gained a little bit the past few years. And I really think water is the biggest difference in the yield differences because if you're not watering correctly, no amount of fertilizer or any other care is going to make a difference. Conservation has to be a critical part of what we're doing on the farm and what we're doing as citizens of California. Drip is the way to do it. Furrow to sprinkler, you're reducing your water in half. When you go from sprinkler to drip, you're reducing it again in a half. So from furrow to drip, you've really made a significant water savings. Roughly about 62% of the district is now in drip. The way we were able to accomplish this is the state has made money available through low interest loans to the district, then the district manages that money and loans it out to the growers. That's been a very fruitful program and we hope to do more in the future because there is quite a bit of demand still for drip systems. Over 85% of the wine grape acreage uses drip irrigation, but it's also interesting to note that precise water management is the fastest and best way to improve wine quality. Over 50% of the growers have an annual water budget that they're working with. It's based on understanding how much water do the vines need and when the plant needs that water. That's a very key part of that. Some farmers are finding and using new sources of water, such as very high quality treated recycled water that can be used in ways we've never thought of before. I'm the general manager of Seamus Farms. My name's Dale Huss. I've been with the company for 24 years. And we're just outside of Salinas in a small town called Castroville. We grow everything from artichokes to spinach. And behind us is romaine lettuce. It's what everything revolves around here. We're very proud of the fact that we're the largest users of recycled water in the world. It became very, very 
important for us to find an alternative water source so that we can continue to farm here in the North Salinas Valley. Of course, all the different water or potentially new water sources were considered, everything from desal, which was very, very expensive, to uh, the use of recycled water. And everybody was concerned about recycled water, principally because people just really don't understand it. As it turns out in our case, our recycled water is actually better from an agronomic standpoint than what the well water was before in much of the project. Better water management goes beyond the farm. Irrigation districts are also learning how to use water more effectively by delivering water to farmers when they need it, rather than on some random schedule. They're also using pricing to use water more effectively. We have a pre-irrigation, and what that means is that the water that is applied during the winter months for leaching and storing water, you can only apply nine inches of water. And if you exceed that amount, then the water cost doubles. We haven't collected anything for over usage of, of, of pre-irrigation because there was a notice put out and all of our growers uh, pretty much stayed under. We know that our current use of water in California is unsustainable. But we also know that they're smart, effective, innovative things that can be done. These stories that show what farmers are already doing can be adapted far more widely and produce a sustainable agricultural sector for the coming decades. California is such a unique and diverse place. Using sustainable practices is a great way to brand California as the special place it is for growing lots of different crops. Mm -hmm.